I had just flew in like 30 minutes before the game from Cabo for a week. Okay. Okay. And and <laughs> I was in no condition to play a basketball game. <laughs> What up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Players Podcast. My name is Kyle Hines, and I'm your host. Today, we got a very special guest, um, you know, one of my guys. I know I say that a lot, but this is truly, you know, one of my guys. Um, you know, he's one of the most lethal scorers in, in all of EuroLeague, and, I mean, probably all the world. Um, he's a 2019 uh, EuroLeague scoring champion, um, former second team all EuroLeague, probably going to have a couple more. Um, hopefully a couple first teams in the future. Um, currently playing for um, AS Monaco, my guy, Mr. Michael Harry James. Mike, what's good, man? How's everything? Good, man. I got a ride to a couple first teams, too. <laughs> COVID got one of mine. That's facts. That's facts. That's facts. That's facts. We're not even going to lie about that. That's facts. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe even MVP. Maybe even MVP. You know, we, we don't need to discuss it. <laughs> uh, first off, man, I got to give you your props. Um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a soldier boy. You soldier boy, you on this one. Um, you was the first. Oh, you was the first overseas basketball player with a a podcast or like a social media show. And I must admit, got to give you your props, your flowers. You was the guy that kind of started it off. And um, admittedly, you know, the rest of us kind of, you know, stole your idea. You know, back in the day, you had the uh, the Mike James show. And I mean, you you was you was social before all of, anybody else was social, bro. I mean, you know, it it was fun, to be honest, but it wasn't me. It was cool for a little bit, though. You know, it's better for you to do it and me just, to, you know, <laughs> watch it. It's better for you to do it. How'd you how'd you come up with the the idea and like originally like what made you what made you want to do it? I don't even really remember why I did it. To be honest, I think uh, first of all, you know, I'd be bored at the house all the time. Yeah, and I was just like, man, that would be dope if somebody did that, like interview people, and then uh, then people would start watching. And I was like, damn, I need to like make it try to like make it more professional because it was kind of like janky because I did it on Instagram Live. <laughs> Yeah. So I took like so I took like a month off to get some stuff together, and then I was just like, "Man, this is too much work. I'm done." <laughs> and then I quit. And this was like this and it low, was over from low key. Like I said, you was the first to do it. This was like pre COVID. It's like 2018. I want to say right, something like that. 18, something like that. I was in Milan. I was in Milan when I started. Yeah. So this is like pre COVID oh. before like IG Live really got like you know what I mean like how it is now. Like everybody's on IG Live now, but like you was like I said, Soldier Boy, bro. You was you was the first. And I seen the vision. I just, you know, I be trying to do stuff all by myself, and I ain't that, you know, I ain't got enough patience. So, so for me, feel you, feel you. Now you, you're in Monaco right now. I see you got the the uh, the the stars in the background, like the like you in the uh, in the wraith. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so so low key, man. How how was uh how's Monaco? How, how's Monaco, man? How you enjoying life there? I mean, you just like I said, you just recently got there, but. You know, how you enjoying everything there? It's dope. Uh, I like it a lot, to be honest. It's a nice city, a lot to do. You know, I'm a big restaurant guy, so they got a whole bunch of those. And they got movie theaters, so that's basically all I need to, you know. That's all you need. To be solid right there. Yeah, that's basically my thing. And I can shop whenever I want to. So. Is it is it something about the city that, like, surprised you? Like, before you went there? I mean, obviously, we all know about Monaco, you know, the luxury, like you said, you know, you know that. You know, all the different stuff they got there, but was it something there like I mean, once you got there that surprised you that was like totally different than you didn't expect? How small it was. I didn't realize how small it is until I actually got here. Like really. It's really like a 10 minute drive to the whole city. Mm -hmm. Or the whole country or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah like the whatever it's region or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So it's like 10 minutes to it. Like I live on the out, like on the edge of Monaco, and the gym is on the opposite side, and take me ten minutes to get to the gym. I mean, that's not too bad. I mean, it beats beats traffic. It does, and then with traffic, it's like twenty minutes. 
What so you talked about like restaurants, like what's been your uh your, your favorite restaurant or your favorite spot like to kind of like just hang out and just be at? It's a uh it's an Indian like Indian cuisine restaurant called Maya Jai out here. Uh-huh. It's called Maya Jai. I I go there like twice a week. When you come, I take you. It's yeah, nice. I gotta come they got the nice little through. curry and everything. It's, it's it's dope. On you, on you. Um I'm broke. It's yeah, on you for sure. <laughs> Now, Monaco is kind of a, you know, it's a first year team in your league. Um, and, you know, so far at this point, I mean, you guys been, you know, been doing really well. Um, you know, you're an experienced Euro league player. So, like, what has been, what has it been like coming to, you know, a team or like an organization that's, you know, ex- coming to Euro league for the first time? I mean, they just, like, the whole organization doesn't have that much experience in general. It's not like they yeah. have, like, a, uh, like a really experienced Euro league coach. Like, he's, he's coached a couple of seasons in Euro league or something like, like, maybe like one and a half something like that with Asheville so it's not like they have like a whole bunch of experience in general so they don't like like they don't know what they don't know like it's kind of like they're learning on the fly and I'm like I got like stuff that I know so I'm trying to tell them but it's like unless you actually see it or like experience some things you're not really gonna know and see like okay this is why we should do this and this is why we you know what I'm saying like yeah it's hard to like gauge like uh what they'll know until we actually get through a full season. So I just try to make suggestions such to everybody, basically players as well, just by how how to get through the season and when you should take your days off and when you should practice a little bit harder because you yeah. had it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's true. stuff like that. I mean, you kind of like a a vet. I mean, now I mean it's like your what fifth or sixth yearly season, something like that. Man, this is my eighth, man. What are you talking about? Eighth? My bad. I ain't mean to, sh- I ain't mean to shortchange you. I ain't mean to shortchange you. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. This is my eighth, man. Now, what about, like, the fans in the city? Um, I mean, it looks like from, from the outside looking in, watching the games, it looks like, I mean, the, the, the court, like, the, y'all home court is probably one of y'all advantages that y'all have. I mean, it's a, it looks like it's a smaller gym, but it looks like the fans is, like, you know, really into the game. They really kind of bring, like, this totally different atmosphere. I mean, yeah, I mean, to be honest, I didn't know what the fans would be like coming here just because, you know, I ain't never seen Monaco play. I never watched a game in my life. Yeah. So uh, it's a smaller gym, but it, it, it gets pretty full. Cool. We sold out a couple games in EuroLeague. I think like three out of the four we played in mm-hmm. at home. So, I mean, that's a good amount, to be honest. And the fans be there, they be into the game. And I think they're appreciating us because we've been, uh, you know, competitive throughout the whole season. So. Uh, it's definitely helped us out. I think, uh, especially with a young team, like we got, like fans are important to us. Cause it's, for a veteran team, you can kind of lock in without fans and that it don't really matter. But for a younger team, you know, we definitely need fans just to help us out with a little bit. Facts. Now in the, in the interview, I think it was a couple of years ago, somebody asked you about, you know, where was your next stop or be, where did you predicted to be? And you said Monaco. Now, did you ever think, that that would actually happen, or you was just saying that just like this off a of whim, just because that's where you want to travel at. I mean, Kyle, you know me. I don't. I don't. I'm really competitive, Kyle, and yeah. I don't like other <laughs> other teams. <laughs> I don't like other teams. That's not my team. So when he asked me, I, I didn't want to say another Euroleague team because I don't. I don't like them. So. <laughs> So I just felt like Monaco just kind of came to my mind because I ain't never been there. I ain't never played in France and everybody said it was nice. So that yeah. was just sounded good at the time. I didn't think, uh, you know, I ever had like a chance of actually having it. Now, do you vision yourself? And I mean, you can tell me to shut up if you want me to, but do you vision yourself being there for a the long time, like for a long term? Or like, is this, is this, does this look like, you know, home? Like I so said, you, you 31, eight years in Euro League. Um, you know, you've been around. But you know, just 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 feeling like this can possibly be, you know, you know, home home for you. Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, it would be nice if they was in your league again, or we was in your league again. Excuse me for that bad uh you know, word, but uh, being in your league would help. And if uh, we're competitive and this and they moving in the right direction to try to continue to be competitive, competitive and get better every year, then for sure, I, I'm staying here. I don't. I don't really need to go other places, especially if it's, you know, if it's a good environment and we can compete and what else can you really ask for? Now I'm gonna quickly go back to the beginning for you um, in, in Portland, Oregon, you know, growing up in Portland. 
Um, obviously, everybody knows you got the nickname, The Natural. Um, and you you kind of told me, Loki, I didn't believe you, but you told me, you know, where you got the nickname from. So can you kind of, you know, I think you explained it a couple of times on Twitter, but, you know, what was growing like growing up like in Portland um, and explain the, the the natural nickname that you uh, that you use on Twitter and et cetera. Portland is fun. And part of the reason why I got the natural is because I got a lot of different friends. Like, I don't got a lot of different friends. But I hang out with like my friends and they got different friends. It's like a little clique. And everybody doesn't really play basketball. Yeah. So some people are football players, some people are just track, some people are baseball. So whenever we go somewhere and go do something, it ain't always basketball. So I had to, pl- I played every sport mm-hmm. just because that's what all my friends are doing. That's just what, I, you know what I mean? You don't, like when you're young and growing up, it's not like you just like, I'm only going to play basketball. I'm only yeah. going to be, that's what, that's what kids do now. Back yeah. when I was, Nah, you did everything. You, did, you, did, <laughs> yeah, you did played everything. whatever season it was. That's just what you was. Yeah. In football season, I was Dion. In basketball <laughs> season, I was Jordan. And in baseball, I was Griffey. All in one season. And then summertime, I was all three of them, depending on what we were playing. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, and I was just, uh, when I was younger, I was just kind of, I'm athletic. I'm just kind of good at everything. Like, I kind of had just like a natural ability to just catch on to stuff and be good. So they just call me the natural. What was was basketball your best sport, or would you would you say that you were better at other sports? It depends on who you ask, honestly. I'm asking Basketball's you. obviously my best my best sport now. <laughs> I'm at one you. point, it, at one point it was football, and one point it was baseball. So did you did you have then, dreams? Then, did you did you always have dreams like to to be a professional basketball player? Was that always like number one, or was this like you know was this like you just wanted to be like you said Dion or or you know Bojax like or anything like you just wanted to do be good at it, whatever the season was when I was growing up. I just yeah. wanted to be that. Like I I was like bro, I'm gonna play in the NBA, the NFL, and the MLB all at once, and they're gonna let me do it because I'm gonna be that good. <laughs> <laughs> but then when I got older. It was just like, all right, I hope I can go to college. And then after college, it was like, all right, I hope I can go to another college and play D1. And then after that, it was like, man, I don't know if I'm good enough to play pro, but we'll see. Yeah. And then, you know, it just kind of happened. When did you When did you just, like, start? When did you, like, just focus only on basketball? As it was a high school where, like you said, was you in high school, you still playing all, all three sports or – uh, kind of in high school, I was playing only basketball, like later on in high school, but I mean, obviously in college, it was a wrap. Yeah. Did I you... thought about trying, going to try to play football in college, but I wasn't going to do it. I think it was no. just me being bored. <laughs> I feel like you low-key got to be like a little bit crazy to play, uh, to play football, spot pain, like to get continuously. Yeah, I ain't. Mean, yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah, you got to be. I mean, football players is I mean, different. They different. They, different. they definitely got to be. They got to be different yeah, because of different. what they play. They got to be definitely different. So, I don't know. Yeah, they got to be different for sure. Now, when you, did you think, because you, uh, I did my little research, just you, you guys won a state championship, right? Mm-hmm. So, I don't know how, I don't know how it is in Oregon. I'm, I'm sure that was a, you know, a big deal. You know, you know, winning the state championship and everything, but was it? Did you feel like you know, because you came out of school and you know, you only had, uh, from what I understand, you only had you know, low, not, not many Division One offers, Division Two, II, Division Three. Did you feel like you were under recruited? It was it, you know, was it more or less because you know, coming from where you came from, that it just wasn't, you know, looked at or whatever. Um, because like you said, you end up going to like, you know, you end up going to a JUCO. Like my mom is just a regular person from Portland. So it's not like she knew anything about recruitment or colleges or what was going on or like clearhouse or anything yeah. like that. So I didn't know nothing about really nothing until like that's... halfway through my senior year. Yo, that's that's crazy. Yo. That's, that's the same that's the same thing happened to me, yo. Like literally like my mom's like didn't know <laughs> anything about anything, yo. Like literally like like if it wasn't for like my um one of the guidance counselors, like I wouldn't be able to go to college. Like Literally, like she was signing me up for like normal classes and everything. Like we had no idea about clearing house, recruiting, like AAU. I didn't, I didn't play know AAU. What that was at all. Yeah, I didn't play AAU until like my right before my senior year because I had no idea. I was just out this. I played. 
See, I played at U and still didn't know. I didn't. Yeah. I was just out there hooping like hey, somebody. I get an offer and I go wherever I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, uh, so really, I wasn't even thinking about it like that. And then somebody, uh, one of the like, one of my AAU coaches asked me about it. My high school coach asked me about it because somebody asked him. And then the, one of the University of Portland uh, assistants, his name is Eric Jackson. Mm -hmm. He was like, so where's your clearinghouse stuff? What's your number? And I was like, bro, I don't even know what you're talking about. And he helped me set it up and everything. And then he was like, you need this score on this to be eligible to come to our school. And I was like, all right. I didn't get that score, to be honest. <laughs> but that's what happened. How'd you end up going to, uh, to Lamar? To be honest, that's a, that's a different type of story. Yeah. I got to, I got to Eastern Arizona Juco because I was at Open Gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of, sort of <laughs> my home boy, one of my best, one of my best friends was going there already. His coach was in town and he came to Open Gym to watch him. Yeah. He was already going there. So I was there and I was playing and then he offered me like a week later and that's how I went there. And I wasn't, I didn't know what I was doing at that point. I was just like, yeah, I, you just I think my mom was like, yeah, yeah, my mom was like, yeah, you could just try to hoop around here and just get a job. And I was like, all right, man. <laughs> Yo, I, cause I met your mom and your mom was like the sweetest lady ever. And I swear I could like hear her just like say that, like, you know, like she was probably like, all right, like this is what it is, all right. <laughs> You can just get a job, you know, regular, regular people stuff, you know, just basketball was cool. It's over now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. Um, so I want to talk a little bit more about Portland. Um, the whole, you know, that whole area is kind of, it's kind of, under, I guess you could say underrated as far as athletes and as far as, um, you know, basketball in general. Um, so I want to know in your opinion, I mean, even at your school, I mean, you had uh, Terrell Brandon. Um, you know, you got, uh, you know, Big Sue that plays with the Dolphins. Um, I mean, the Rams now, sorry, the Rams. Um, I mean, it's been- plays the you Bucks know, now. Yeah, Bucks, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. The Bucks, I named yeah, all, I named, I named all his team. Yeah, yeah, I played, I named his whole, yeah, uh, his whole resume. Um, I mean, AC Green, a bunch of guys apart. So for, for you, who's the best player to come out of Portland? Like basketball player? Yeah, basketball player. Terrell Brandon. Terrell Brandon. He the only one. He the only one. I mean, I don't normally count Kevin Love because he's not really from Portland, the city. He like from a city like right outside. So I don't yeah. normally count. But he he from Portland. But I, I always say Terrell Brandon because he was like the first person to like be like somebody really really good to come out of Portland. Like he went to like like he was in all star games and all type of stuff. Yeah. And he always came back to like the inner city and he had like a barber shop in the middle of Portland. Like. So I always say Terrell Brandon. Yeah, I mean, a lot was, of people say Damon Stoudemire, but I say Terrell Brandon. Terrell Brandon. I mean, yeah, Terrell Brandon is underrated too, bro. He was before he got people hurt. People don't like don't. Yeah, people don't really know about TV like that, man. He was, he, was, right. he was saucy. He was saucy. He was like he was saucy. Then um, when you you said when you finished your your college career, um, you know what was your thought thought about you know going pro? Um, did you, like I said, I mean, you, you came out, you was, you had a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of accolades, you know, uh, tournament MVP, y'all made the, the, the NCAA tournament, you had big games. I think you said you had, you had a 52 point game or something like that in college. And then you had a big game yeah. in versus Kentucky or something like that. So, you know, did you, from there, like, what was you thinking? Like, was you thinking, you know, I'm gonna go pro, I'm gonna go to the league. Like, what was, what was your mindset come out of college? To be honest, I wasn't even like, I was so oblivious to overseas basketball that I didn't really know enough to know anything. I was just like, yeah, you could go overseas. Like, yeah. <laughs> and overseas was just one big place to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, you just go overseas and you just kill and nobody can guard you. That's yeah. how it works. I'm gonna have like 40 every game, like, nobody can guard me. <laughs> so, wait, so, so I was you... just so oblivious. But I knew nothing. So when I, some agents was calling me, I was just like, yeah, I, like, y'all going to be lucky to have me because I'm going to have 40 <laughs> every time. <laughs> so, so, so when you, I, but I was just, I didn't know nothing. So when you got to Croatia, when you got there the, the first day, the first week, 
Um, and we don't got to get into like why you left or whatever, but like just that first week, like, was it such like an eye opening experience for you? Like, what was it like? Like just, just being there, just like your first, your first time touching overseas. To be honest, it just makes you kind of socially awkward. Like it makes you not want to leave the house and it's your first time. Cause like, I don't really want to go to Burger King and be like, I want that and point. And like, (laughs) I don't want to go to like a regular store. And they say something, I'm like, hi, and they look at you like, hey, you're American, you don't speak, you don't speak what we talking about over here. And then yeah. you're just kind of looking around like, no, I don't. You know what I mean? So it's like, it makes it socially awkward. Like, it just made me stay in the house and play video games all day. I mean, you do that now. Like, so, I, mean, it, 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 I do that. That's, that's <laughs> part of the reason why I do it now, to be honest. It was just like, I got into such a routine. Like, yeah, let me just go home and get on my game. And it made me stay up at like, this is also why I got bad sleeping habits. I used to stay up until like five or six or seven every morning and just hang out and talk to my homeboy. Because you would try to, you would try to be like on American time, like. Yeah, I would just be talking, and then you, I go to practice at like nine a.m., take a long sleep in between practices, go to night practice, and just be up. I mean, it makes sense because I mean, like you live. What's the, the time difference? What 10, 10 hours? I'm like that 10 yeah. hours. hour. So it, it makes sense. Like I, I was I was the same way. Like I would go to bed at like probably like up to like when my wife came. Like I would go to bed like four or five o'clock in the morning, yo. Like I would literally just just be up. Cause it was like I had no reason to to sleep. Like what am I sleep for? Like I wasn't I was gonna wake up and go to practice. I wasn't doing anything else. So that's how I live now. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you got the worst. By far the worst sleeping habits I've seen. One of the worst. One of the worst. But I really just don't sleep, bro. Like, I don't take naps. I can't sleep if the sun is up. That's really like my problem. Like, I got, if the sun come up, I, I'm up. Yeah. So it's like, the the house I live in now, my, my room don't black all the way out. As soon as the sun is up, my dog is up and I'm up. So I'm always up at like 8, 30, 9, no matter what I did before. So it's just, and I, and I just lay there in bed and can't fall asleep. I be trying though. That's what I thought was crazy too. Cause I remember when we was, when we was playing together, I was like, you say you don't take naps. Like you just be on the game until we got to go, until it's time to leave the game. Like, like we was in a hotel and everybody else be like pregame naps, this, that, and the other. And you just be on the game. And then when it's time to go, you just pack it up and just leave. I'm just like, Yo, how does he, yeah, how do you even function? Yo, it's crazy. Okay, if I take a nap, I take a, some like every once in a while I take a nap before a game, and you can always tell what game it is because I look like I took a nap. Like I look real slow. I look like I'm tired. I look like I'm sleep. <laughs> That's funny. Like bro. every time I started off like I was asleep, it was because I took a nap. You took a nap. I mean, yeah. I mean, everybody, everybody different. So I can't do naps. I don't know how y'all do naps. I mean, I can't, I can't survive without a nap. That's like, that's like, if I don't nap, I look like I'm asleep. I look like I'm tired out there. So I got to. You got the craziest wake up from nap face ever. When you come down for snack, you look like you <laughs> mad and look like you're trying to fight everybody. Because I'll be mad. I'll be, I'm mad, I'll be mad I woke up, bro. Like, <laughs> I'll be tight, yo. When that log off, I'll be tight, man. I'll be tight. My wife is saying now, like when I like when I wake up in the morning, I'm I'm hella hella grumpy, like hella grumpy. Like she don't even want to talk to me in the morning because I just I'll be mad. I'm I'll be mad. I'm I guess it's bad to say, but I'll be mad. I'll be waking up. I'll be like, man, I just want to sleep like shower or whatever. <laughs> now I'm gonna get now me me and you got me and you got some things in common that we both started out or kind of started out in second division Italy. Now I wanted to. And he was in second division Israel as well. And I wanted to kind of like really pinpoint that because obviously everybody sees your success today. And, you know, for the younger kids, a lot of them, they think, you know, like you just came overseas and immediately, you know, was that guy. Um, You know, they don't really understand like so much about like the grind and what it takes to kind of, you know, get to where you got. So, you know, like I said, I think it's important to, you know, to mention that, you know, to talk about the grind and talk about those years where, you said you was in the second division, you know, I mean, had to work your way up, um, you know, to get to where you was got to. You know, I think it was like four, was it four years before you, you got to Euro League or something like that? Two and a half. Two and a half, my bad. Two and a half. So talk about that, like, talk about that grind. Short changing, man. <laughs> talk about that grind. 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 Tal
talk about like that grind of like, you know, going from, you know, the second division to, to you know, to now to kind of put that in perspective for, for people, especially for the younger, younger kids that's, you know, wants to, that may one day play overseas. Well, honestly, the third division is mm -hmm. unfortunately, mm -hmm. but uh, I mean, it's it's definitely you got to work on your game. If you want to be good, you got to work on your game just in general. So I mean, like uh, you don't get good without working on your game, and you can always tell who work on that game the next time they come back from the season, and who work who like worked out this season. I can always tell who worked on their game from the off season. Thanks. Like you can just see like who was in the lab, who was doing extra stuff, who got something new in their game, who did something new, who got who got this, who could shoot a little bit better. Like you can tell who like plays basketball. Yeah. So I mean, if you don't work on your game, you're just not gonna be good. And no matter where you started at, you can get to somewhere else. It's just you gotta take it serious. You gotta work on your game, like I said. And you got to get a little bit lucky because you got to kill and somebody got to like you and somebody got to see you too. So that's all kind of got some stuff to do with luck. But I mean, and I got an amazing level of confidence. So, you know, that I always felt like I was, I, I felt like who I was now before I was who I, I am now. <laughs> that makes sense. When did, when, when, did, when did you start like really kind of like, like you talk, I mean, for me, like I know your work ethic. I know the work that you put in during the summertime. Like, I know that like, you're, you're in the gym, you know, every single day, you know, whether or not you're doing, you know, hooping stuff or you're doing like plyometrics and all this different type of stuff and or you playing everywhere. But, you know, when did that like that point in your professional career that you started really taking like the off season like really serious? Uh, well, I'm just a basketball guy in general, so I can really just go play basketball all day anywhere like. You can hit me, you know this about me though. You can hit me up in the summer and be like, bro, we finna go hoop right here. And I'd be like, all right, I'll yeah. just show up like five minutes of four and be ready to play. And just yeah. Be ready to do whatever y'all want to do and play for like five hours if that's what y'all want to do. So I just like playing basketball. So, I mean, that part was always easy for me just to go and hoop and work on my game and just care about playing basketball. That part was always came natural to me because I don't know. I just always really liked playing basketball. I just like playing sports in general, but working on my game and just something I felt passionate about it just always came like an obvious thing to do. Mm -hmm. So that work, I guess the work has always kind of been there, but just having the knowledge to know what to work on as far as my body and like, like getting older and knowing what I need to work on, like for the season just kind of came with playing every year. Like at first when I was overseas, I just kind of played basketball all summer. Like every day I was playing like five hours. Now it's like more precise, more what I need to work on, more what I need to get in. It's different stuff I do throughout the summer and just, uh, you know, keeping my body in shape and stuff like that. Do you, do you think that, that it, it helps? I mean, to me, obviously, but do you think it helps that the, the competition that you play against every summer? Because like you said, I mean, you you're everywhere. Like you're 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 in the playground in Portland. You're in the Portland program. The next weekend you're in the Drew League. Next weekend, you in the lab with AD and Drew. Next weekend, you know, you over here. So, you know, do you think that helps as well? I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously playing against the same people at a time, it's going to be a limit to what you can reach because it's always the same people. So I try to, like, give a variety, and it helps that I got some friends that happen to be good at basketball or completely <laughs> in positions to play people that can play people that are good at basketball. So that also helps a lot, uh, you know. And like, uh, you know, it kind of pays to be who other people think I am, I guess, because uh, obviously people want to watch me play in the Portland program because I'm from Portland and somebody likes me in the world. And then uh, my brother T. Mills coaches a team in the Drew League, so he always wants me to come play. So, you know, it's just things that, uh, you know, I like playing basketball and people have opened opportunities for me to play. So it makes it easier to do that. I'm gonna get back to the, the Portland program in a little bit, but I wanna talk, um, you know, first, two things. So first, when you got that that EuroLeague buyout with Bosconia, um, you know, what did you know about the EuroLeague up to that point? 
Um, and then when you got there, you know, you you had tremendous success with Pasconia. You know, the first year, y'all was solid. The second year, y'all end up getting to, to the Final Four. So, you know, what was, you know, your first experiences like playing year of league basketball? Uh, I had no idea about what year of league basketball was. That actually was the first year I actually played against or seen a EuroLeague team play because mm. uh, I was in Greece for them first like seven games and we played against San Antonio and the And uh, that's kind of when I started to learn about what EuroLeague was before that. I really had no idea. And then uh, so when I started playing it and pay attention, then I was like, dang, I got to watch everybody play. I got to know who does this. I got to know who's good. And then that ain't, you know, that's kind of like a, I wouldn't say it's a drug, but that's something that I enjoy doing, like picking apart people, knowing what he's going to do. That, that's mean, that's I, something else that I think, I don't mean to cut you off, but I think that's something else that a lot of people don't know about you. Like, you watch every game, and you literally, like, know, like, everybody's tendencies. Like, it, like crazy. Like, that was one of the, like, most crazy things I thought. Like, I thought, like, I'm thinking, like, you just out there, and like, this is mad natural for you. But, like, you literally know what everybody's doing. And you know, like you said, you know everything about like a player, like Tennessee's, all that type of stuff. Like that's that was for me. That was like just crazy to understand. Yeah, the funny thing is, Paris Lee on my team today. He was like, "Bro, you don't even really play defense. You just know all everybody's plays, so you just go to where they're gonna be." At. In fact. And I was like, "Bro, that's defense. If I know what y'all do, what am I doing? What are you talking about?" But I mean, I just like watching hoop. So I already, and then so when I go to play somebody I already know what you want to do because I don't I don't watch you like 20 times this year I already know who you are yeah I already know what plays you like to run in the clutch I already know how you like to move I already know what passes you really don't like to make like I already watched you not because I was scouting you just because I wanted to watch but I already watched because I was I was interested yeah so it just it don't be like foreign to me when I be out there because I already didn't watch yeah, yeah, man, it makes sense. I mean, you, you prepare, and I think I said a lot of people, like I said, because of who you are, they they you know, they take that for granted, like your 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 level of preparation and professionalism in that in that sense. I mean, you know, people don't like giving me credit for nothing, man. <laughs> That's what we try to do, man. I'm trying, I'm trying to show show people a different, <laughs> different Mike James, man. man. People don't like giving me credit for shit out here. <laughs> Now the, the 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 second part of that question is obviously you, you made the Euro League, you did, you know what I mean, you got did well, but then when you got to Phoenix, so like getting to the league, and at this point now you're starting to get more recognition of like you said, like people starting to know who Mike James is. Um so playing in Phoenix and, and playing well in Phoenix, did that kind of give you like more confidence or did it kind of give you like validation to like, you know, like I'm in the league, like. I mean, did you ever think, you know, that would actually happen or that, you know, that would occur? To be honest, another thing a lot of people don't know about me is I, what, like, I have no problem with being in the NBA, but I don't care. Like, it isn't like my top priority in life. Yeah, I know that, yeah. Like, I was gonna ask you like when that. people be like, like, when people be like, nah, I got to play in the league, I honestly don't care. Yeah. So, like. I'd rather just be happy, make good money, and just play basketball. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the league is nice. It was fun. Both of my experiences were super dope. And, uh, you know, the league just ain't for everybody. I mean, they say it's the best 450. It's probably the best, like, 300. And then we could just argue about the rest <laughs> just by facts. people's situation. <laughs> yeah, that's facts. So people just got different situations. And pe some people want to do this and some people want to do that. And I'm just one of them people that, like um, – if the right situation came along and I could get in and be comfortable, I would love to go. But if not, then I can find a better situation in Europe to play, then I'd rather be in a better situation that's going to make me happy. Because, I mean, a season is a long time to be somewhere and not be happy. That's facts. That's 100% true. I, I think that's what some people get lost in, like, saying they want to be in the NBA. Like, yeah, you get to be closer to your, to your homeboys. Yeah, you're in the States, but you playing 25 minutes a game over in Europe, you could do, you contributing, you on the court, you calling out stuff. But now you wanted to do, they just show dancing on the bench in the NBA. That can't be fun. Yeah. I'm a competitor. I, I hate sitting on the bench. That, that, I hate coming out of games. That's what, that's what I think so, sometimes people don't really understand about you. It's like, you're a, you're a diehard competitor. Like, I know that about you because I, I played with you, played against you, but I know that you, like, 
Like that's all you care about. Like you care about competing. Like you don't come out where it is, how it is, wherever you just want to compete. Man, I'll beat my daughter in one on one if she can't play me right now. Hundred <laughs> percent. It's not a game over here. It's not. <laughs> if it's someone aligned, I'm trying to win. It's not for like. I don't know. I, I know how some people live. Like it's just a game. Like you know, what I'm saying I want to be in the NBA and just say I'm in the NBA. But what is like saying in the, you in the NBA get for you? Yeah. Like I've been in the NBA twice on three different teams, and it's it just you know what I'm saying. Like it was cool to be walk around like yeah I'm on the Suns or yeah I'm on the Nets, but like I really don't like recognition anyway. So me saying that ain't really like I'd rather just say yeah I play overseas, and then you don't know where I'm who it is, and right. you won't know me, so I can just go away. <laughs> Keep it moving. <laughs> Yeah, so I ain't gotta talk no more about it. Like if I say, yeah, I, I play basketball. Oh, for who? The Nets. Oh, for real? How's playing with Katie and Kyrie and James? It's all right. I mean, they're good. Then you gotta have a whole spiel. Like I'd rather just go about my day unbothered. But how many? How many people? And I'm sure your homeboys. And I'm sure you know other people. You know, what I mean, have like talked to you. Like, yo, why are you not in the league? I'm sure that's like a conversation. Like. People probably like get mad at you. They probably just be like, "Yo, why are you not in the league? Like, why are you not mm -hmm. playing in the league? Like, how many times did that like that conversation happen?" To be honest, my homeboys don't really ask me. Yeah. To be honest, because they already, I mean, they're close to me, and people that are close to me already yeah. know like how I am. So it's like not really. It's more of like a people who don't know me type of thing. Like ask me that, and then I just basically, I just be like, normally I either say I don't know or, you know. I don't. I just. I just get very vague answers that make it seem like, man, I want to be, but I'm not. Yeah. But that's probably not. Really. Yeah, it's kind of. It's kind of fifty-fifty at this point. Now, because like you, you're also, and I don't know how to say this, but it's like you're like kind of like the first non-NBA like viral player. Does that make sense? Like, like, yeah. like your workouts. Like, first of all, your workouts. So, like, your workouts. They post your workouts on Instagram, and now you got you know a bunch of 11, 12 year old kids, you know, trying to shoot this this one legged floater, <laughs> real rap. Like this, this kids, this kids in my neighborhood that like like low key like just talk to me because like I play with you, or I know you. That's like this is dead serious. Like I'd be like, oh, they be like, I'd be like, hey, I'd be like, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I do this overseas. Be like, no, but you you know Mike James. Like you could call him on Facetime right now. Like you know him. I'm like, yeah, I know him, but I'm be like, you know what I mean? So like. How does it feel to be like, like that type of guy? Like, you know, like you're like social media, like you say one thing on Twitter, you get, you know I mean? The whole Kyrie thing or whatever you just mentioned, you could say the earth is flat or you can say the, yeah, the sky is, is green and people going to retweet it and go crazy. Like, so how is that like for you to be like, like as an overseas guy, be able to kind of move the needle like that? Like, does it, yeah, I mean, I'm sure for you, like, I know you, like, you don't take it serious, but, like, how is it, like, how does it feel to be, like, in that position? People was mad about the Kyrie thing. <laughs> they was mad about that. <laughs> but uh, to be honest, you know I don't like attention, man. I, I like to do stuff in my own time and just be in my own little circle. But it's cool. I mean, it's always good to get recognition for, for like, being good at what you love or, like, good at, yeah. like, what you do. You know what I'm saying? So... It's always good to get your flowers, but it's a little bit of, I wouldn't say annoying. Annoying is too much. Like, it's a little bit just, like, extra sometimes because mm -hmm. it's just like, okay. But I'm not, because I'm not, like, I'm not famous. Like, I'm not, like, somebody, I'm not Kevin Durant. I'm not no. Kyrie Irving. I'm not James Harden. So, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm yeah. not, like, famous. So, it's just, like, you shouldn't be, like. I don't know. I don't want to say you shouldn't be looking at me like that, but you shouldn't be looking at me like yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? So, so like, uh, and not to say like I get looked at like that, but I'm saying like in any capacity, you shouldn't happen yeah. like that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's cool. I mean, some of the videos are funny. Filet is hilarious. So they're always <laughs> funny when I see them. They're always hilarious when I see them. And, and, you know, I just, I like watching highlights. I can watch highlights all day. So seeing them is, is dope. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's kind of my answer. The Kyrie thing was hilarious, though. Yeah, I thought that. <laughs> At the time, I like, yo, I see, like, I see you being on Twitter, and I'm like, this Mike, this is Mike's board. 
I'd be like, yo, sometimes you just be putting stuff out there just like to like just to say stuff. Not the Kyrie thing, but I'm just saying like in general, like you just be saying stuff. I feel like sometimes like just to just to get a reaction or just to see like, you know, just to see if see if people woke or awake. Low key. Cause I know you and I know and I know how intelligent you are. Like a lot of people don't know this. And a lot of things you do and say sometimes are like super calculated. Like sometimes you say stuff and do stuff and just be doing it. And then other times you just be doing it just to see what's gonna happen. I be on Twitter is fun to me, man. People be thinking I'd be serious on that shit. It's funny, man. People would be so upset. Do you know how many people was upset that I said Kyrie was <laughs> top five most skilled player ever? They were so upset at me. They like turned it into a Steph Curry versus Kyrie thing. And I was like, I mean, he's top four. So if you don't got Steph in your top four, then yes, he is. I mean, that's on you. I mean, which one for me? <laughs> yes, he is. Secretly, I wanted to tell him that I think he never won, but I didn't say it. I just kind of said he was top four and just left it at that. Uh-huh. So, I mean, you could you could be mad at me about a whole bunch of other people if you wanted to, but we'll <laughs> leave it alone. I mean, it's not my fault. I think he's skilled. I didn't say he was better than anyone. I just said, you know. Hey, man, I, I, I'm i not arguing with you. He can play basketball. It's not my fault. I yeah, mean, I'm not, I'm work not on your arguing. game. I'm not arguing with you at all. Now, I'm a, I want to go back to the, the Portland Pro Am. Um, and it, it's something that uh, I think is I think it's it's huge. And I think I commend you for, you know, you doing it, you, Kevin Pritchard and, you know, the other guys for, you know, you know, out there, you know, hooping and really trying to basically put on for your city. So, you know, talk about that. Talk about, you know, like you said, I mean, obviously you're a hooper and you love to hoop, but let's talk about specifically why, you know, the Portland program. And you was there. You was there every game, you know, going, you know, putting up numbers. And then talk specifically about the game with you and uh, with you and Kevin Pritchard, you know, the game where y'all, y'all went crazy and kind of, you know, that another game that kind of went viral. Uh, I actually coached some games, too, because I got I almost got in trouble for the NBA because I played in the game yeah. probably supposed to. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's for it was for the city and like people liked it and people came out, and people came to watch and kids came to watch. And, you know, people were, you know, not to sound like cocky, but people, some people were coming to watch me. So I didn't want to like disappoint them and not show up just because, you know, just because I was at home and I didn't feel like going. And it was only like 10 minutes from my house. So it was easy to get to. <laughs> So, you know, I was definitely going to show up every game. I was definitely going to participate and, you know, be there and uh, just, you know, be around, be uh, be touchable, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, where I'm from, a lot of – there's not a lot of professional athletes in general, NBA, NFL, overseas, MLB. It's not just a lot of us in general. It's like 10 of us. Maybe it's probably like six of us, five of us right now playing right now. So, yeah. like – uh. So I like to be touchable. I like for like kids to like see like yeah, if you make it big, it's cool. Like you know, you don't gotta be like vulnerable. You don't gotta be like out here like doing dumb stuff. But you can be around other people. You can be touchable. You can talk to other kids. So I try to make that a point when I'm home and just you know be around and be amongst the city and not try to be like away or spread out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's basically what the Portland Pro Am was bringing it back was about just like being something, bringing it back some for the city and having people show up and participate and making it just something that people can come watch and especially post COVID where you know everybody wasn't able to come watch anything. So you know it was, it was big for the summer to be honest. Talk about that uh the game where you and uh you and uh Kevin uh, yeah. went went crazy. How did you how did you let them outscore you? Like you just. I mean, he went for 93. I thought you would be. Do you want to know the real answer or do you want yeah. me to give you a PG answer? Nah, the real answer. Uh, we played on a Saturday, I think. And I had just flew in like 30 minutes before the game from Cabo for a week. Okay. Okay. And and <laughs> I was in no condition to play a basketball game. So you was coming off, you was coming off the you was coming off the couch. <laughs> Yeah, I was in no position to play a basketball game at that point in my life. I don't know how I survived. I asked for a sub four times in pro am, so hey, it wasn't a good day for me. <laughs> so I mean, you know, he, and I he, mean, to be honest, he had a, he was like a, he came fresh off of summer league and was like in yeah, in game ready. mode and it was it was ready to go and was yeah. serious and he took it real serious the whole game. 
which I mean, I feel him, you know. Uh, he showed shot a lot, but he made a lot of shots too. He, he so, made a lot. I don't know. <laughs> and we played a real game. That's what people don't realize. We played 12 minute quarters in Pro Am. Yeah. Everybody else in Pro Am plays eight minute quarters. We played 12 minute quarters. Yeah. So that's that's a whole extra quarter, two quarters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it was a long time to be playing. The score was like 178 to 170. Six and I missed the game winner, so it wasn't like we got blown blown out. Uh, it was a competitive game. It was competitive. Yeah, so it wasn't. It was just a lot. Of, it was just a long game, and it was tiring. And you know, I think I had like four points in like the first quarter. I think I only had like fifteen in the first half. Really? But they were they were winning by like twenty. And you came back at the end of the half, and I was just like, all right, I guess I'm gonna have to try to conjure up something. <laughs> You know, some. I mean, you play with me. Sometimes I can conjure some stuff up out of nowhere and yeah. make some stuff happen. Yeah, and you just get you get hot out of nowhere. You know, I mean, so that means y'all gotta run it. Y'all gotta run it back again next year. I mean, yeah. I mean, he'll play. He'll play again. I, I hope so. I think. I mean, uh, we talk every once in a while. I mean, I wouldn't say we're like close because we're like really different age brackets. Yeah. I think he's like 22, 23, and obviously I'm thirty one. So I mean. We in different age brackets, but I mean, he's definitely from the city, and he's putting on for sure. And he's done it in multiple levels, putting on, and he's the one right now. So I mean, uh, you know, he'll come and play. I hope he should come and play. He had a team this year, so he should have a team next year. He won't play summer league next year for sure, and he yeah. had to this year, so he didn't play as many games as I think he wanted to. But uh, I'm pretty sure he'll play him more next year, and I, I it'll be even bigger next year because we'll. Uh, We'll have some nice things going. I think we'll have some more guests and stuff. So, you know, it'll be yeah, I'm going to pull up next year. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to play, but I'm going to pull up. I'm going to pull up and I'm going to uh, – Man, you, you're more than welcome to come join the up. Mike James team, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come pull up. We have some, Will played. I know, I know. I Will see Will. played. He's, yeah. He stunk it up, but he played. <laughs> he for sure stunk it up. He came in. Like, you know how Will be in the summer, man. Sometimes yeah. Will's summer is nothing. Yeah. He'd be sick of basketball sometimes. <laughs> so I got a few more questions, and I'm gonna get you out on this one. Um, so you you bought your house, and this is just kind of a, a off topic, off serious question. You bought your house. What was the one thing that you splurged on for your house that that was kind of like non negotiable? Like it was probably something that was like you didn't necessarily need to do it, but she was like, "It was my house. I'm gonna buy it anyway." Well, first of all, I built it. So some of the stuff is just unnecessary in general. <laughs> so like I got a fire pit outside. I really don't need a fire pit, but I got one. I got a like a detachable weight room that's just like it looked like a garage, but it's just a weight, but it's gonna yeah. be a weight room. So yeah. I really don't need that, but I got it. The theater room I probably didn't need, but I did it anyway. It was uh -huh. supposed to be another bedroom, but I said no and I changed it. I think actually my game room. I, I think I showed you my game, yeah, yeah, my yeah, game room. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's a lot it's going dope. on in there. It's like it's double, it's double monitored. It's got computers and it's got the little uh, Mortal Kombat Pac-Man. Pac Pac yeah, it's, it, I, I really didn't need none of that, but I like it and I play games, so whatever. What's, your, what's one thing about you that EuroLeague fans don't know or just basketball fans in general? <sighs> people like me, man. I'm actually really funny, man. I think people don't people don't be knowing that, man. I'm Thanks. people just think everybody hates me and I'm an asshole, but I'm not, man. People like me and I'm funny, man. <laughs> uh, I need to change that one. That's the only one that actually bothers me. I think anyone, everyone else doesn't bother me. People like me, man. People be, you know, I be talking to people, man. People like me in Europe, man. Nah, that's that's the truth. Like Thank all, you. all. Oh, like you respect it. You, you respect it amongst every basketball player. Like everybody, like everybody respects you. Everybody knows what it is. So I think a lot of us just look from my outside looking in, look at like the lad, like the fans and some of the other stuff that be going on. We'd be like, yo, if you really, you really knew Mike, you wouldn't even felt that way. I mean, you know, I'm a funny guy, man. I got jokes, man. Awesome. For sure, I'm going to crack jokes when I see you. I don't know what I'm going to say, but it's yeah, going to be tough and ridiculous I that I probably shouldn't say. <laughs> 
what is, what's your what's your what's your favorite place to play um in your league and who is the opponent that you like playing specific player who's the one player that you just like you know that's the player I want to go up against and then also and vice versa who's the toughest opponent that you got to like you know if you play against this person you know it's going to be it's going to be a battle <laughs> what came to my mind I don't want to say but <laughs> you know keep it keep at it <laughs> <laughs> what I was gonna say was so crazy. It wouldn't have helped. It wouldn't have helped for the for the thing I just said. But I was gonna say, can't nobody, man. You know, can't nobody, man. <laughs> Way friendly too, man. Damn. But uh, uh <laughs> I'm trying to think. Where do I like playing? You know what? I like playing the Zagiris Center. I like the gym. Not really uh-huh. because of the fans, man. I just like the gym. Uh huh. I used to really like playing in uh, the one place in Turkey that Brad Wanamaker used to play that I can't say the name. Uh-huh. They're uh, Yeah, however you say it. Mm-hmm. But uh, who I don't like playing. <sighs> who? Well, Shane's not, not, games is always fun. Not so much you don't Shane's like, but some, are, yeah, somebody like you just like, you know, it's going to be like, it's going to be, it's going to be a fun matchup or someone's going to be a tough matchup. Like you got to, you know what I mean? You got to. You got to bring your A game for that one. Shane's games is always fun just because uh, I know what everybody else is is waiting to see. Yeah. So the hype around it, especially especially that one year when he was going crazy. I think that was, you know. Yeah. That one year, that one year, the COVID year, that yeah, everybody, yeah, yeah. it was a real, everybody, was, it was a little bit of a buzz over that game. Yeah, that yeah, game yeah. was, you know. That year was crazy. Just I remember how that y'all, he was. y'all like, y'all went back and forth like the first I can't remember. I can't remember. I know the first quarter was crazy. I can't remember how it went. But I feel like it was like the first couple buckets. Like he scored something, and you came out and scored something, or something like that. Yeah, that that the buzz around the game leading up, it was just like, yeah, yeah. we gotta, we gotta. But uh, those games is always fun. You know, it was kind of Nick collapses. I think because we played together for so long, he just kind of knows where, know, yeah. what I kind of want to do. Uh, yeah, he knows me real well, and he's he's kind of taller. I don't know why he – he doesn't really give me trouble, but he kind of bothers me sometimes. Yeah. He got Nick, good hands. Nick's he bothers a, me a little bit. Sometimes. He's a he's an underrated defender. Like, he don't get a lot of credit for, like, his defense. Like, he's – I guess because he's such a, a great passer, and everybody knows him for that. But, like, people don't really, like, pinpoint, like, his defense, like – you know, that's how people think you do one thing well, they'll Thanks. give you credit for that. People think I only score basketball, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's just how it goes, man. You do one thing too good, you can't do nothing else. That's just what they mark you for. Facts, 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 facts. But but Nick, Nick and Nick and Shane, probably. I get it. I, I get him. I gotta think some more. Composo used to be one too. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't like that. He, like he just run he just Nah, he stop. just got like reckless abandon. Like he don't yeah. care about his body. He just put it like throw it in the. I'm like, bro. And he up, don't. Man? And he don't stop. Like that's the thing about it. Like he don't stop. Yeah. Like, he, I could. I could score whatever shot ever on him, and he don't care. It's just like, all right. Well. He just going to keep going. Yo, he don't keep going. Like a play. Like I'll try to. I'll, I'll set one screen on him. Then somebody come around. And he'll set another screen on him. He rolling like it's like he don't stop, bro. He don't stop. And I just scored a lot of buckets on Madrid, and he don't care. He didn't yeah. care not one time. Just keep going. All right. Tough one too. I last, that. last two questions: advice for for younger players that you know want to be the next Mike James or want to be successful. You know, have a successful basketball career, just be successful at life. In period. Uh, keep going. I mean. Just because the first door didn't work for you don't mean the second door won't. So, you know what I'm saying? Keep pushing through. You know, everything can be successful. Some things have to fail. That's how you learn and grow. So, you know, just like you're not going to make every shot, you're not going to stop shooting after you don't make a shot. So, uh, you know, keep going. And then my last question is, what the Packers going? Is the Packers going to be in the Super Bowl or not? I'm waiting to put this, put some money up right here. I mean – we got the GOAT, man. So, you know, when you got the GOAT, 
You pretty much you do whatever you want, man. I mean, a Rod. I mean, everybody, y- y'all know about Aaron Rodgers. I don't know why. You know what I'm saying? Whenever a, a good quarterback come around, he go crazy. People be like, "Oh yeah, he just like Aaron Rodgers." They don't ever say, it, but they don't be. They don't be like Aaron. It's only one Aaron. You know. All right, we got. He we dresses going to make up this. like John Wick and and dance and poo shice. You know, it's Aaron Rodgers around here, man. We gonna have to make this bet, about? bro. We gonna have to make this bet to see see if uh see if the Packers get to the Super Bowl. You don't get even to, got I, a you don't even got a team, man. I got the. I mean, my team is terrible, but I'm just I just like root against whoever your team is. That's crazy. Why you want to root against me? <laughs> That's like, so I just, wild. <laughs> I just like I just like doing it. Like <laughs> like literally, I swear. I swear, every time the Packers lose, I swear I want to text you. Like I swear, I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm gonna chill. I mean, I don't lose that often, but I swear, like, <laughs> I swear. I don't know if it's just hate. It probably yeah, just hate. It probably just hate. I ain't gonna lie to you, but it just, it just is what it get is. Get that out your heart, man. It is what it is, man. When they yeah. lost week one, I was like, yeah. When they lost week one, I was like, yeah, we're going to be bad this year. Aaron don't care. He want to go home. <laughs> but we've been good ever since, man. Aaron been throwing that ball around. Yeah, man, turn around. But I, I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you taking the time. Um, like I said, you my guy. It's always good to to talk and you know conversate and you know what I mean crack some jokes. So I appreciate you, man. Anytime, my brother. Just hear me. Anytime, man. All all the best. I wish you wish you luck throughout the remainder of the season. I mean, we'll link up soon. Yeah, I wish you all the best too, except for two games, man. Stay away from me. You already know. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe to the Players Podcast to listen to more conversations with your favorite player about their careers and interests off the court. You can also check out Upwood TV and GTM Family Productions on YouTube for more content. Thank you for listening.